A few days ago, one of the pro members shared this incredible website. We had already explored the scroll animation used in the hero section before, but this time the focus was on recreating the scroll carousel where slides change as you scroll, paired with a really sleek parallax effect. At the bottom, you can also see there are progress bars indicating how much scroll is left before the next slide appears. The whole thing looked so cool that I thought it would be a great challenge to take on. So last weekend, I spent a few hours putting together a basic version of the scroll experience. I managed to get pretty close, recreating almost everything except the scroll based marquee part. I spent around 5 hours extra just trying to animate that marquee velocity in sync with scroll while maintaining its natural movement, but I realized my approach wasn't ideal. It led to a lot of messy, unoptimized code. So for now, I decided to stick with this minimal version, which also keeps the video short and focused. I might revisit the marquee animation separately and create a dedicated video for it later on. This version right here is fully functional, featuring that key scroll triggered slide transitions and the bottom progress bars. It took nearly 6 hours to rebuild this, so if you find it helpful, a like on the video would mean a lot and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other micro projects and a complete website template every month, you can check out the pro membership through the link in the description. Let's dive into the code where I'll walk you through how I built this using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP and of course scroll trigger. We'll start by setting up the basic structure by adding the navigation bar. The navbar is divided into two parts, the logo and the nav items. Inside the logo section, I'll add a single anchor link and for the nav items, I'll add a few more. Next, we need three main sections, the intro, the carousel and the outro. For the intro and outro, just to avoid an empty looking page, I'll add some simple placeholder text inside the paragraph elements. The carousel is divided into two main elements, the slide, which will be the first visible slide when the page loads, and the progress bar area. Inside the slide, I'll further divide it into two parts, the slide image and the slide copy. The slide image will simply contain an image element, showing the first slide's image. In the slide copy, I'll add two more elements, a slide tag and a slide marquee. The slide tag will be a simple paragraph element and the slide marquee will include a marquee container which holds the marquee text inside an h1 element. Finally, inside the progress bar area, since we are going to have 5 slides in total, I'll add 5 div elements with the class name progress bar. We'll animate these progress bars based on the scroll later on. That's pretty much it for the HTML structure. We'll dynamically create the rest of the slides later using JavaScript. Let's move on to the styling now. I'll start by importing the interfont from Google Fonts that we'll be using throughout the project. First, I'll reset all the default margins, paddings, and set box sizing to border box to avoid any unexpected spacing issues. Then, I'll set the base font for the entire body to enter. For our main typography elements, the H1 headings will be quite bold and large with a heavy font weight of 700. I'm also adding a negative letter spacing for that modern look and setting will change transform to extra optimize the performance for the marquee animation we'll add later. For paragraph elements, I have chosen a clean white color with a moderate font size and medium font weight. All anchor links will be white with no underline and a slightly smaller font size than the paragraphs. Images need to cover their containers completely, so I'm setting them to have 100% width and height with object fit set to cover. I'm also adding wheel change transform here for parallax effect we'll create later on. The navigation bar needs to stay visible while scrolling, so I'm making it fixed at the top with the full viewport width. I've added some padding and set it to display flex with space between to position the logo and navigation items on opposite ends. For the nav items, I'm using display flex with a small gap between links. The logo gets a larger font size and heavier font weight to make it stand out. Our sections will take up their full viewport width and height with centered content. I am using a dark background color and setting overflow to hidden to prevent any content from spilling out. The slide and slide image elements need to be absolutely positioned to cover their parent container entirely. 
Each slide is aligned to the bottom with flex end and has some padding at the bottom to create space for our progress bars. For the slide images, I'm adding a scale transformation to create that zoomed in effect to work better with the parallax later on. The slide copy section holds our text content and needs to have overflow hidden to contain the marquee effect. The slide tag gets some horizontal padding to align with the rest of the layout. For the marquee, I am setting an extremely wide width of 1000% to accommodate the scrolling text that will move horizontally. The carousel progress section sits at the bottom of our carousel. It's absolutely positioned with padding all around and uses flex layout with space between to distribute the progress bars evenly. Finally, each progress bar starts as a thin line with low opacity. I'm using the after pseudo element to create that actual progress indicator that will animate. It's initially scaled to zero width using the CSS variable progress that will control with JavaScript. All the transform properties have transform origin set to the left side, so the progress bars will fill from left to right. And again, I'm using will change transform to optimize the animation performance. This styling creates the foundation for our scroll based carousel. In the next part, we'll add the JavaScript to bring it all to life with dynamic content and animations. Before we dive into the next part, let me tell you that I've created a separate file called slides.js that will contain all of our slides content in an organized way. Inside this file, I've defined an array called slides that will hold objects representing each slide in our carousel. Each slide object has three key properties, tag, marquee, and image. We'll use these keys to create new slides. Having this data in a separate file keeps our code organized and makes it much easier to add, remove or modify slides later without touching the code functionality. Now let's dive into the JavaScript that powers our scroll carousel. First, I'll import our slides data from the file we just created. Then I need GSAP for animations, scroll trigger as a GSAP plugin and Lenis for smooth scrolling. Then I'll register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP so we can use all its features. Next, I'll add an event listener for the DOM content loaded event to make sure our code runs only after the page is fully loaded. Inside this listener, I need to set up a few state variables. Active slide index will track which slide is currently visible. Previous progress, which will store our last scroll position. Is animating slide flag that prevents multiple slide animations from running at once. Trigger destroyed helps us avoid errors if scroll trigger gets killed. Now I initialize Lenis for that smooth scrolling experience. I'll connect it to GSAP sticker to ensure our animations sync perfectly with the scroll events. For our initial slide that's already in the HTML, I'll use clip path to make sure it's fully visible and set the image's vertical position to zero. Then I'll call the init marquee animation function to get the text scrolling for our first slide. Let me create two helper functions here. First, the update progress bars function takes a progress value between 0 and 1 and update our 5 progress bars. Since we have 5 slides, I'll multiply the progress by 5 and then subtract each bar's index. This makes each bar fill up one at a time as we scroll. Second, the init marquee animation function creates the continuous text scrolling effect. It works by tripling the text content and then animating it to move left exactly by one third of its width. With a linear ease and infinite repeat, this creates the illusion of endless scrolling text. I am adding a tiny rotation value of 0.01 as a trick to prevent pixel snapping issues in some browsers. These functions create the foundation for our scroll driven carousel. Next, we'll look at how we create and animate new slides as the user scrolls. Now, I need to create the function that will handle the slide transitions. This is going to be the heart of our carousel. 
I'll create a function called create an animate slide that takes two parameters, the index of the new slide and a boolean indicating whether we are scrolling forward or backward. Inside this function, I'll first grab the carousel element and do a quick check to make sure it exists. If not, we'll just exit the function early. Next, I'll get the current slide that's already visible in the carousel. If there is no current slide for some reason, I'll set the is animating slide flag to false and exit the function. Then I'll get the data for the new slide from our slides array using the index parameter. Now comes the interesting part. I'll create a new slide element from scratch using document.createElement method, give it the slide class and populate its HTML structure using template literals. The HTML structure matches what we had in our original slide, but now I am dynamically inserting the image source, tag text and marquee text from our slide data. After creating the slide structure, I right away initialize the marquee animation on the new slide's heading. Then I'll grab references to the image and copy sections of the current slide with some error checking to make sure they exist. Before starting any new animations, it's important to kill any ongoing GSAP animations on these elements to prevent conflicts. So I'll use kill twins of method to stop any animations that might be running on the current slide elements. This function will handle the creation of new slides, but the actual animation will be different depending on whether we are scrolling forward or backward. We'll see how that works next. I'll implement the animation logic based on whether we are scrolling forward or backward. If we are scrolling forward, I first need to get references to the image and copy sections of the new slide. Then I'll set the initial state of the new slide using clip path. I'm setting it to start from the bottom with a polygon that's essentially a flat line at the bottom of the container. This means the slide will be completely hidden initially. For the new slide's image, I'll set its Y position to 25%. This means it's offset downward, ready to move up during the animation. And for the text content, I'm setting it to 100%, which pushes it completely below the visible area. Now, I'll add the new slide to the DOM by appending it to the carousel container. Then the animations begin. First, I'll animate the clip path of the new slide to reveal it from the bottom to top using a duration of 1 second and a power 4 easing. Simultaneously, I'll animate both the image and text content to move up to their final positions at 0%. At the same time, I need to animate out the current slide. I'll set its clip path to shrink toward the top, effectively making it disappear upward. When this animation starts, I'll also animate the current slide's image and text to move upward creating that nice parallax effect where everything moves at slightly different speeds. Once the animation completes, I'll remove the old slide from the DOM to clean up and set his animating slide back to false so the new animations can trigger. If we are scrolling backward, the logic is similar but reversed. I'll set the initial state of the new slide to be hidden at the top instead of the bottom. The image and text content will start offset upward this time. I'll insert the new slide before the current one in the DOM. Then I'll animate the clip path to reveal the slide from top to bottom. Simultaneously, I'll move the image and text content down to their final positions. And I'll animate the current slide to disappear toward the bottom. The cleanup is the same as before. Remove the old slide and reset the animation flag. This approach creates a smooth transition effect where slides enter from the bottom when scrolling down and from the top when scrolling up with content moving at different speeds for that parallax feel. Finally, I'll set up the scroll trigger that will control the entire carousel based on the scroll position. I am creating a scroll trigger instance that triggers when the carousel sections comes into view. I'll set the start position to top which means the animation starts when the top of the carousel reaches the top of the viewport. For the end position, I am setting it to be 15 times the window height from the start point. This gives us plenty of scroll distance to work with for our 5 slides. You can adjust this value to make the scrolling faster or slower. Setting pin to true is crucial. This keeps the carousel section fixed on the screen while we are scrolling through it. And 
pin spacing ensures that other content below gets pushed down appropriately. The scrub value of one creates a slight delay between scrolling and the animation updating which gives us a smoother feel. The heart of the functionality is in the on update callback which runs every time the scroll position changes. First, I check if the trigger has been destroyed to avoid errors. Then I get the current progress value which is a number between 0 and 1 representing how far we have scrolled through the trigger section. I immediately update the progress bars based on this value. If we are currently in the middle of a slide animation, I store the progress and exit early to prevent triggering multiple animations at once. Next, I determine if we are scrolling forward or backward by comparing the current progress to the previous progress. Then I calculate which slide should be active based on the progress. By multiplying by 5 and using floor method, we divide our total scroll range into 5 equal sections, one for each slide. The min range ensures we don't exceed the maximum index of 4. If the target slide is different from the current active slide, I set is animating slide to true to prevent further animations, then call our create an animate slide function with the new slide index and scrolling direction. I wrap this in a try catch block to handle any potential errors properly. When successful, I update the active slide index to reflect the new active slide. Finally, I store the current progress as previous progress for the next update. The on kill callback sets trigger destroyed to true if the scroll trigger is destroyed which helps prevent errors if the page is navigated away from. And with that, our scroll powered carousel is complete. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.